All right. So, so far, we've had a look at setting up a basic API that can receive HTTP requests and respond to them by sending a response. And we need to add a little bit to our understanding here uh, of how responses work. So in the MDM documentation, if we look at the responses section, you can see that they always start with the start line as well. Excuse me. And that start line consists of the <laughs> HTTP version, the status code, and the status text. And let's take a look at the different kind of status codes. So uh, if we go to MDN and we open up the HTTP response status code documentation, then we can see that there are five classes of HTTP responses. So we have class number one, which is status codes from 100 to 199, which is informational responses. Then you have class number two, which is successful responses, which is from 200 to 299. And then you have redirects, uh, class number three, which is uh, 300 to 399. You have client errors from 400 to 499. And you have server errors from 500 to 599. And then if you scroll a little bit down here, we can see that we have different types of um, names on different types of codes. So for example, if we receive a successful response from the server, then 200 OK is the standard sort of status code for saying that the request succeeded. and you have 201 for created, if you want to um, create a resource, uh, 202 for accepted. So it's a lot to process and kind of um, get into your head, but learning these status codes and actually using them appropriately when you design an API will help the developers who are going to work with your API a lot because these codes will help to kind of, it will help the developer immensely when something goes wrong because, uh, and or something goes right because they will know based on the codes where to start the uh, debugging or what to do next. So. I encourage you to take a look at um, these codes here and get to know them and get to know when to use them appropriately. Um, because when you are writing your API, you are going to control this. And if you don't implement them correctly, then you're going to make it a lot harder for other de developers to use your service. So. I would encourage you to uh, get to know these intimately and, um, and start using them appropriately as well. All right, so uh, I'm just going to show you one more thing in the, in the application here. So we have our server here and we can go ahead and if we want to change the status code of the response, uh, then we can just do res.status. And let's say we want to give a 404, which stands for uh, file not found or not found. Let's check. I can't remember. Yeah, it's not found. So that means the server can't find the requested uh, resource. Now, uh, we're not specifically getting a resource here. Uh, but let's say that this was an endpoint where we we're actually trying to locate a um, resource in the database and trying to delete it. Now, if we couldn't find that um, item, then you, we would respond with a 404 not found. So let's just see how that works. 
Uh, we set the status code here. We start up, stop and start the application again. And then let's go to Postman. And we want to send a delete request to 3000 slash hello. And if you can see here, we got the status 404 not found in return. So that means that we were able to set the status code correctly. All right, perfect. Um, I think we're gonna leave it that for now. Uh, you can go and get uh, some more information on the status code on your own. And then I think we are going to look at creating a more fully fledged out API in the next video. All right, thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you there.